back everyone. If this is your first time here, my name is Adam D'Agostino, the peptide professor. Today, we are going to discuss a peptide that has been making waves in fitness and longevity circles in recent years. Studies have explored its potential for muscle growth, improving metabolism, and also supporting recovery processes. The peptide is CJC1295. CJC1295 is a GHRP, or growth hormone-releasing peptide, which works by stimulating the pituitary gland to produce and release more of the body's natural growth hormone. Unlike natural GHRH, or growth hormone-releasing hormone, this synthetic peptide mimics GHRH and has a longer-lasting effect. This process can lead to increased levels of insulin-like growth factor 1, also known as IGF-1, and human growth hormone, commonly known as HDH. IGF-1 is a hormone that plays a crucial role in development, growth, and metabolism, while also regulating body composition through its influence on blood sugar and insulin sensitivity. CJC-1295 is offered in two main forms which differ significantly in their half-life and dosing protocol. CJC with DAC is a version which includes drug affinity complex, or DAC, that allows it to bind with serum albumin, a protein in the blood. This extends the half-life to about one week, which allows for less frequent dosing. CJC without DAC, also known as modified GRF-129, has a much shorter half-life, which in turn requires a more frequent dosing schedule. This version has four amino acid substitutions that enhance its stability and effectiveness, allowing it to closely mimic the body's natural pulsatile growth hormone release. So how does it work? As I mentioned earlier, CJC1295 works by binding to GHRH receptors in the pituitary gland. Think of it as the body's growth hormone amplifier. Instead of dumping artificial growth hormone into your system, it simply nudges the pituitary gland to release more of what's already there. This keeps everything running smoothly without shutting down your natural production. After binding to receptors in the pituitary to kickstart the growth hormone release process, CJC sets off a biochemical chain reaction, increasing cyclic adenosine monophosphate levels, also known as cyclic AMP. This activates protein kinase A, which is a key player in growth hormone synthesis. Instead of spiking and crashing like synthetic HGH, it stays elevated in a controlled natural rhythm. CJC1295 supercharges protein synthesis, helping to build lean muscle and speed up recovery. More growth hormone means better muscle repair, increased strength, and faster recovery between training sessions. CJC1295 also enhances lipolysis, which is the breakdown of stored fat for energy. Studies show that growth hormone releasing peptides lead to significant reductions in visceral and subcutaneous fat, even without major diet changes. Additionally, growth hormone revs up metabolism, helping to burn more calories at rest. The sustained growth hormone increase from CJC1295 makes it a powerful tool for long-term fat loss while also pre preserving muscle mass. Research shows that higher growth hormone levels lead to deeper, more restorative sleep, which speeds up muscle recovery and boosts energy levels. Deep sleep is when the body repairs itself, and growth hormone is the driving force behind that process. Beyond sleep, Growth hormone helps reduce inflammation and accelerate tissue repair, making CJC1295 useful for healing and recovery, especially among athletes. Another interesting point is that growth hormone plays a role in collagen production, cellular repair, and skin elasticity. By promoting collagen synthesis, CJC exhibits anti-aging effects and helps to keep skin firm and smooth. While CJC is a versatile peptide on its own, it is often stacked with ipamorelin because of their synergistic effects. 
Ipamorelin is another synthetic peptide that stimulates the pituitary gland to release growth hormone. The main difference is that ipamorelin acts by mimicking ghrelin, which is a hunger hormone in the stomach. This triggers growth hormone release without spiking cortisol or any other hormones for that matter. Stacking CJC and IPA together works well because CJC provides a solid growth hormone base while ipamorelin delivers pulsatile spikes. This combo maximizes muscle growth, fat loss, and recovery while also keeping side effects low. Next, we're going to discuss the dosing protocol. The correct dosage for CJC-1295 depends on whether you are using it with DAC or without DAC. The recommended dosage for CJC with DAC is two milligrams injected subcutaneously once per week. For CJC without DAC, the recommended dosage is 200 to 300 micrograms daily injected subcutaneously. This should be done about 30 to 60 minutes before bed on an empty stomach. As with any peptide, I always recommend to start low and go slow. The reason for doing this is to assess your tolerance to the peptide. While CJC-1295 has a good safety profile, it's always prudent to start low and go slow. In this case, you would start with about half the recommended dosage, which would equate to 100 micrograms. Use this amount for your first dose, and if you feel good after that, continue to increase by 50 micrograms each day until you reach the desired level of 200 to 300 micrograms. To prevent desensitization of GHRH receptors, I personally recommend following a schedule of four to five days on and one to two days off. For example, you might use CJC from Monday through Thursday and then take Friday off and then pick it back up again on Saturday. Alternatively, if you prefer to have a set schedule for each week, rather than having to keep track of the days, you can simply use the peptide from Monday through Friday and then take Saturday and Sunday off, repeating the schedule every week. Generally speaking, you should use CJC 1295 for a duration of about eight to 12 weeks and then take eight to 12 weeks off. Research to date indicates that CJC is generally well tolerated when administered at the dosage I just mentioned. As with any peptide, there's always the possibility of injection site reactions. Some common minor side effects from using CJC include redness or irritation at the injection site, minor headaches and or dizziness, flushing, and water retention. Typically, these occur while using the DAC version. CJC without DAC has a much lower incidence of these reactions, which is why I personally recommend using the no DAC version. The risk profile from CJC-1295 is widely considered much lower compared to direct HGH therapy, which can cause complications like insulin resistance and water retention. You don't have to take my word for it. I encourage you to do your own research and consult with your physician or coach if you have any questions. As always, if you wanna know where I source my peptides from, you should sign up for the email list. This will provide a plethora of great information which you can utilize on your health and wellness journey. I also highly recommend getting the Essential Peptide Guide as well as the Peptides Reference Chart and you can even sign up for coaching, which actually includes both of those documents at no extra cost. All of the links can be found in this video's description, as well as the channel's profile. I really appreciate everyone watching this video and supporting the channel, and I look forward to working with you. Thanks again.